Hello, this is Andy Bridgick, Associate Editor at Workforce Magazine. We are here live at the, at the SHRM 2018 Annual Conference um, doing live stream with various HR experts. Right now I have Jaren Langrich. She is the Chief Service Officer at Caraloo, and she is speaking to us about caregiving benefits. So yeah, to start out, what are the best things that wellness programs and benefits programs can do or that employers can do within those to support caregivers? Well, and it, what you need to know, Andy, is, is it's an emerging trend, right? Yeah. So we've got aging in America, we've got a workforce that is, um, that's retiring and not enough people to replace them. Yeah. And one of the things that you see in the workforce right now is really primarily flexible schedule, but as far mm -hmm. as specific benefits, there's very few companies out there that are actually targeting and actually addressing caregivers in the workforce. Now, we talk about caregiving from, you know, infant all the way, you know, to the grave and, uh, you know, anywhere in between. But again, a flexible work schedule is great, but what about finding those resources? We like to say uh, people have a tendency to Google their way to caregiving. Hmm. And if you're spending all your time Googling or you're trying to figure it out, you're not a healthcare expert. Hmm. You know, I'm a healthcare, I guess a healthcare expert. <laughs> um, I've got, I'm a clinician, been in healthcare almost wow. 30 years. So, you know, I kind of understand that, but if you've not lived in that world, what do you do? And so for corporate America, you know, they don't live in the space. Yeah. And we don't live in the space, you know, as individuals. Yeah. Uh, and so what corporate America needs to do is step up and start realizing that caregivers are there amongst them. Start providing, yeah. you know, innovative tools, whether that's, you know, support groups they're on campus those are just easy wow. and free to start um, or actually other benefits that are coming on board to address caregivers specifically wow um and that's really interesting i guess another topic i'm curious about in this space is just the uh, mental and emotional state of caregivers so what does that look like for those of us in the audience who have never been a caregiver um what's that mental life like what's it like for them when they're taking <laughs> care of all these people well I've been a caregiver for almost over 17 years I've been married 23 years so wow. you can imagine that's <laughs> been my husband is a saint so uh, I you know he's a caregiver too with me of my parents they were diagnosed younger and you know I'm the person that you know that mental state you have you know higher incidence of depression you've got a higher incidence of absenteeism or presenteeism you're there but you're not focused yeah you're not focused on work you're not focused on family you're not focused on things that you need to be you know caregivers we have to be very careful because a lot of times caregivers become ill yeah you know, you're starting to see also trends where the health care costs are rising for the caregiver. Wow. Yeah. Even more so than the person they're caring for. And a lot of times as we age, we also see that the caregiver might actually become ill and pass before the person they're caring for. So I know from a personal aspect on the, how it wears on you mentally, how yeah. you're not there, the depression that can come. You, know, you have to find resources for yourself. You have to find outlets. You know, exercise yeah. is a great way. You know, and wellness programs address that. Huh. But again, are we actually encouraging, or do we even know that we have caregivers amongst yeah. us in, in the workforce to say, hey, you know, if you exercise, depression is less. You know, yeah. are you seeking counseling through your EAP programs? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes talking to someone that's not related mm -hmm. to you is so much better yeah. than, ha you know, to then to talking to a loved one or another family member. Um, fantastic. And I guess my next question is, I guess, are there any common practices or policies that a lot of companies, um, that are common in a lot of companies that are not beneficial towards caregivers that maybe employers should be aware of that this could negatively impact them? Well, I think um, as far as, you know, policies, you know, we have our, companies 50 and over have FMLA, Family Medical Leave Act, yeah. their utilization of that, you know, employees understanding how that works, you know, seeking out your HR, seeking yeah. and asking those questions, how they can be utilized for, you know, caregiving. Yeah. Um, there are some other trends that are starting to happen. Could, could an HSA, a healthcare spending account, be utilized? There may be some penalties. Could that be utilized for, you know, the cost of care for yeah. a loved one? You know, again, these are all still new, 
You know, some of your larger companies like Facebook, Microsoft, Deloitte, they're offering paid caregiving time yeah. off and they're starting to mm -hmm. focus in on that. So what I would say to those out there in smaller companies yeah. is to look to those that are starting to, you know, put put policies, put processes in place for yeah. caregivers because they're leading the way. Um, and that's great. And can you repeat some of those companies that are leading the way um, for the Absolutely. camera just so that you know listeners can have someone to, to look towards? Absolutely. Yeah, Facebook, and of course we're here at Sherm, so yeah. Cheryl Sandberg, <laughs> it's not a plug for Facebook, but uh, but they do. They pride themselves in the benefits and you yeah. know, taking care of their employees. Yeah. Right. Um, Microsoft with their paid caregiving time off. Hmm. Deloitte with paid caregiving time off. You're starting to see those companies see what's happening as we talked about at the beginning, right? Yeah. Our workforce is aging. We've got a workforce that's coming up that's not going to replace. Gen yeah. Xers, we're here in the middle mm -hmm. and fewer of us to take care of everyone. Yeah. So literally we have sandwiched ourselves into caregiving yeah. and it's affecting the workforce. So look to those larger mm -hmm. company, the innovations and use technology yeah. to help support caregivers because for companies that doesn't cost a lot because there are social groups out there that they can start connecting people together. Wow, fantastic. And I have one final question yep. for you, and that's when you are a caregiver, I guess, for the caregivers, for the caregivers themselves, these employees, I guess, might there be some reluctance to bring up their issues to the employer because they might be think that, you know, they might not get the promotion, might not get the raise Absolutely. if they're not as invested in work. And then if so, how can an employer address that and make be clear and communicate in a clear way that they do care about the caregiving population. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and we still have a stigma. And I think for the audience, you know, most of us are going to think that women yeah. are the primary caregiver. Well, let me tell you, men are gaining. We're almost mm -hmm. at fifty-fifty now. Wow. So, yeah, and thirty-four percent of millennials are now caregivers. So we have to start addressing this and the stigma that's there, right? Yeah. We talk about our children, we talk about our spouses, but we may be caregiving for our spouse, we may be caregiving for our children, but the one yeah. thing we don't talk about is our parents, our grandparents, because we feel like we're put on earth right to take care of people. Yes. And so that stigma is there, that fear. Having an open policy and transparency about yeah. communicating, knowing what your benefits are, if your companies don't have benefits, seek innovative tools to yeah. address caregiving. And so, you know, we have to get over the stigma of having this conversation. Yeah. Because if I didn't have this conversation about being a caregiver for, you know, as long as I have, I'm here to help those of you that aren't you know, don't even know. We don't want you to Google your way through this yeah. because it's too challenging. So we have to be more open. Find friends, find family, because again, our health care costs are rising. We don't get to spend a lot of time with our doctors yeah. and we don't want to be in the hospitals, but we learn from each other. But there are ways to really start helping the caregivers and remove this stigma because yeah. if you're not caregiving, it's not if, it's when. Yeah. And we're all going to be there. Fantastic. This was a lot of really great information. I guess those are all the questions I have for you, but do you think there's anything else really important on this topic that you want to add? Well, I, you know, again, one of the things is, is that reach out for help. Don't ask. Um, look for caregiver support platforms such as CareLoop um, because, again, don't do it alone. No one out there should ever have to go through caregiving alone. Yeah. It isn't isolating. You feel alone. You feel like nobody understands. And everybody in some way is unique. But yeah, if we come together, we start having these conversations, yeah. then our workforce is going to be stronger. Our workforce and retention, if we offer innovative tools to our employees, yeah. they're going to want to come work for us. They're going to want to stay. And then they're going to know as companies and anyone watching and you as a company, you know, reach out to your HR, ask those questions, don't be afraid. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time Absolutely. and for talking to us live today. Um, thanks for listening, guys, and have a good day.